Hello, welcome to another football show here at Betfred after the winter break. Premier League football is back with a bang and we've seen some of the implications, aren't we, of the transfer window as well. How does that see things shaping up? It's been a busy midweek, Paul Robinson. Massive week. Still got a couple of games, haven't we? But great to have you alongside me because things are starting to get interesting, not least at the bottom. It's all hotting up, isn't it? I mean, the, the recent results... Um, Burnley's performance against Manchester United, OK, good performance, but it was only a draw. They had a great performance at Arsenal, that was only a draw. Bunching up down there, the, the game difference between the two, between the two, three, four games, discrepancy that have been played, it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out, but it really is getting tight down there. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, we're with the former England goalkeeper, got plenty to discuss. Uh, we talked about the midway, big win for Newcastle. Everton might be in a bit of bother, though. Uh, we've got a couple of games, haven't we, talking of teams in bother. Uh, Leicester City in a little bit of bother at the moment because that thumping against Forrest, he wasn't happy, Brendan Rodgers. No, I think rightly so as well. I think they've been so inconsistent this year, Leicester. For, for me, they've conceded far too many goals. Defensively, over the last couple of years, they've been sound and that's been one of the strongest areas. You look at Kasper Schmeichel, the leader. I don't understand why he didn't play him at the weekend against Nottingham Forest. He played a, a Premier League eleven, if you like, a team yeah. that would start. In I mean, the Premier he did, League. did nothing wrong, Danny Ward. No, he did nothing wrong. To but, be fair, made a couple of good Michael's saves. Your best player is yeah. your captain, is your leader. What are you saying to the rest of them if you're taking him out? Now we know a lot of managers do that, but it was never going to be easy. Forest are playing well. They knocked Arsenal out in the last round. They're on an upward curve in the league. They beat Blackburn again last night in the league. Yeah. They're playing really well. I can't understand why I left his captain, his goalkeeper out. But defensively, they're weak. They're conceding far too many goals. They're very, very inconsistent. So he's. He's gone from one of the best managers in the league, touted you know, for the likes of Manchester United, etc., to now he's, I think he's part of the betting for the sack race. Yeah, um, which would be unthinkable, wouldn't it? Uh, goes to his former club as well. It's not a defence you'd like to play behind, I wouldn't have thought. 4-1 win at home to Watford in the Cup, then a 3-2 loss to Spurs, conceded against Brighton, conceded four against Forest. But With what's going wrong? Mo Salah to come back in. So it could be Mane. another four tonight, Mane couldn't it? to come it? back in, Diaz to come back in. Yeah. They're going to have their hands full tonight, Leicester. But saying that, I went to the game at the King Power just after Christmas. Liverpool didn't play particularly well, but Leicester really turned up that night. Yeah. And they played how you expect them to play. I think he's, he's been back financially, Brendan, but he's lost a lot of big players. You look at the list of players, Kante, Chilwell, Mares, Maguire, to name just a few players that he's lost. But they do that. And I think this, this season it'll be Tielemans. Tielemans is an outstanding player. There's already talk of them cutting the price. Manchester United interested, yeah. other clubs interested. So it's how he rejuvenates the side, how he keeps bringing in these players. And it's got to come to an end at some point. You can't keep your recruitment being as good as the players that you're selling. And I think that's where Leicester have fallen down this year. I don't think they've recruited as good as what they've let go. Yeah, they've still got a good squad though, haven't they? So obviously... Uh, Liverpool interested in Tielemans tonight. They might be having a good look at him, close-up look at him tonight. But how will this pan out? Because they scored three goals, didn't they, at Anfield in the FA Cup. But will he go a bit more defence-minded tonight, Brendan, try and shore things up? I think he has to. I think, you know, going to Anfield at any point is difficult. It's going to be a difficult fixture, especially with Liverpool, the way that they're playing at the moment. And Diaz coming into that side. <laughs> Salah and Mane coming back into the equation as well. Jota the playing the way that he is. If you've got a weak defence, the last place you want to go is Anfield. You can guarantee that Liverpool will score goals tonight. Leicester have got to play on the counter-attack. They've got to sit deeper, try and hit Liverpool, expose the spaces that they're going to leave behind. But I struggle to make a case for them tonight, I really do. Yeah, uh, missing Johnny Evans as well. Maybe not the greatest defender as far as pace or whatnot, but an organiser and that's lacking, isn't it? And, and they've missed key players in key areas yeah. as well. A lot of managers have complained this season about fixtures and injuries. Leicester have been hit by injuries and they've been hit specifically at centre-half. And like you say, Johnny Evans, and I touched on Kasper Schmeichel, the leaders of the team. When things aren't going quite right, you need organisation, you need leadership. One of Leicester's huge, huge downfalls this season has been conceding goals from set plays. I think they're one of, if not the most, conceded against yeah. for set plays. And that shows a lack of leadership on the field. Two away wins in the league all season, but uh, they've done well against Liverpool, haven't they? They've done well against Liverpool, but I just I can't make a case for them tonight. I've done, done my predictions, done my, done my lists, and I've got them to lose to th by three tonight. There you go. So a thumping for uh, Liverpool, uh, thumping for Leicester at Liverpool tonight, and Liverpool closing the gap on City, who again 
pretty well straightforward but got the job done against Brentford yeah I think they're, they're pretty methodical at the moment Manchester City 12 points clear at the top we know that Liverpool have got two games in hand on them but I, I know Fred's already paid out on Manchester City and you can't see anything else the way that they're playing they didn't play particularly well against Brentford this is a Brentford team that have lost six on the bounce now but it was job done it, it could have been a difficult away fixture for them yeah. teams have gone there and struggled you know we've seen them beat Arsenal there we've seen Liverpool get a draw there we've seen them play particularly well at home so potentially it could have been a difficult game for City. So I, I can't see past them, you know, who's going to win the league this year. Can you imagine if they had a striker as well? Yeah, I mean, that wouldn't be bad, <laughs> would it? Uh, we'll have a look at the relegation pitch because it is getting really, really interesting. But let's have a look at the other game tonight, uh, which is also interesting. Wolves have been bang on form of late. They could win a fourth match on the spin against an Arsenal side. Well, they've not scored in all competitions in four now, so it's dried up a little bit for them. Well, I was looking at the record. I mean, Arsenal have had an awful January. They failed to win in the league and they've been knocked out of both domestic cups. Yep. This isn't the game that they're going to want tonight. They're not going to want to go to Wolves. Wolves defensively, they've been absolutely outstanding this year. They've conceded 16 in 21 league games, which is an outstanding record for them defensively. And Arsenal, who have lost to Bamiang, we know that they've only got Lacazette and Nketiah as a strike force. Mm. Very inconsistent, a really poor January. They're going to come up against a very robust, very solid Wolves team tonight. It's going to be interesting to see how Arsenal approach this because Wolves, yes, defensively they don't concede many, but they don't concede many going forward. They play without an out-and-out -out striker, without a number nine really, and they haven't scored as many as they'd like to, but they're still sitting, look at them, they're eighth in the table, which is a great position for them to be in at this stage of the season. I think that's a false position. I think they could be even better if they had a number nine. But yeah. it'd be a difficult game for Arsenal tonight. Yeah, would, would they be? Where would they be? I mean, if they maybe had a Raul Jimenez in their ranks at Arsenal, could they be challengers? I think they could be Wolves. I think they're, they're, they certainly would be with the season that they've had. They create the chances, but they just don't score the goals. I think he's the, what he's done since the manager's gone in there, he's made them defensively sound, defensively hard to beat. And you look at their, you know, their goal difference, where they are, pretty level points wise they've got a really good tally of points mm. for this stage of the season but like you say with an out and out striker they could be better than eighth but I mean you look at the company that they're among they're under Tottenham Arsenal Manchester United West Ham which is probably the, the right level for them yeah. they are probably at that level if they're to push on and invest and get a striker that's when you would look for them to challenge higher up so they've both got bo both similar issues, haven't they, Arsenal and Wolves tonight? So where does that lead us? Maybe a draw or a low-scoring game? No, I, I think Wolves will win this tonight. I yeah. think it'll be a, a tough game for Arsenal. I can't see them being able to break down this Wolves defence. We know there's not going to be a lot of goals in it. So I'm going to I'm going to go for... I went for a 1-0 Wolves win, but I think your bet is under 2.5 goals and, and Wolves to win. Yeah, uh, uh, look to their stats as well. I think uh, against teams in the top half of the table, they've only had matches involving less than one and a half goals, which yeah. is... Suggesting I can't see it being a goal tonight. fest tonight, it'll be yeah. tight, but I think that Arsenal are struggling at the moment, they're in a poor run of form and they're coming up against a very good Wolves side. So I've got Wolves to edge it, but not by many goals. There you go, the odd goal, 1-0 maybe, uh, as far as Wolves are concerned this evening. Uh, we've got to talk about the relegation pitch. Wow, it's interesting, isn't it, after the transfer window, uh, Newcastle United. Uh, we weren't sure, Paul, w whether it would be enough for them recruiting in January. It's difficult, isn't it? They seem to have got the right players in. Kieran Trippier scoring as well for them against Everton. Do you think Newcastle have enough? Do you think Everton might be in trouble under Frank Lampard? Oh, there's two questions. I think Newcastle might have enough. I think yeah. the big question was, what type of players was he going to sign in January and how were the players going to settle in? And I think the results he's had since the window have shown positive signs for him. Results and performances. Kieran Trippier has been excellent. I think he was the signing. He was the one that opened the door for the rest of the signings, if you like. And I think apart from Gomera's, the rest of the signings are for now. They're, they're yep. ready for the battle. They're ready to get them out of the position they're in. And you look at the bottom of the league now, they're out of the bottom three for the first time in a long time. And games played wise, they're pretty much in the middle. They haven't played too many. They haven't played too few. They've given themselves every opportunity of getting out of this situation. Mm. When a couple of weeks ago, it looked like they were dead and buried in all honesty. I think they've got the feel good factor there. They're on the upward curve. And I think out of the teams down there, being completely honest, I think there's three worse teams than Newcastle down there. Yeah, well, Newcastle are nine to four to go down. Everton are four to one. I don't think Everton will go down. I think they are. It's the old saying. I think there's, they're too good to go down. You look at the players they've got in that starting eleven in the squad, the quality they've got. I saw the way they played against Brentford. If we're having this conversation before the Newcastle game, it would be a different conversation we'd be having. Frank's come in. They played against Brentford in the FA Cup, won four one, had a fantastic performance, scored goals. Yes, they're not going down, they're in the upward curve. A few days later, they play against Newcastle and they were poor and they get beat. 
without a doubt they're in a relegation battle. Do I think they'll go down? No, I don't. I think if you look at the table now, the only one for me, in all honesty, that could get sucked into it is Brentford. They've played more games than anybody else. And I think the bottom three, as much as it pains to say with Burnley, I think you look at the bottom three now, I can't see it changing. Yeah, Brentford maybe for Burnley. I know probably that's heart as much as head, isn't it? Anyone apart from Leeds for Burnley. <laughs> um, but I think, yeah, heart as much as head. But when you look at it realistically, Burnley have only won one game all yeah. year. Yeah, but it's still in the hunt. I mean, they're four to nine to go down. But Norwich and Watford, they've had a slight change of fortunes as late, haven't they? Norwich are doing seven points from nine. Yeah, but I think you, you, you get in that situation there. You, you've got to start winning games. And as I say to you there, Burnley have won one game out of 20 games. Yes, they've got two, three games in hand, but they've won one in 20. They've got 18 left. So you've got to you look at what they've got to win between now and the end of the season. And a point against Manchester United, great result, good performance, not enough point against Arsenal great result great performance not enough and these games are ticking down Norwich are capable of winning Watford defensively haven't been great but going forward they will always score goals I think those two have got a better opportunity of getting out of the bottom three than Burnley but you look at it down there it's very close it's very tight Everton and Leeds and Brentford Brentford could get sucked in you know yeah well maybe you're hoping that's the case because if we look at Everton the take on your former club uh, Leeds United, Frank Lampard got an immediate response to me in the FA Cup. He's got issues there. They are shipping goals. Leeds are scoring goals. Bang three in during the week. Aston Villa. Everton leads. Then it's Everton away at Southampton are a good side on the day. And then Everton take on Man City. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's it, it tough for Frank, isn't it? It doesn't get it? any easier, does it? Yeah. It really doesn't. And I think he needs results and he needs results quickly. I think his, his, his main aim this year is obviously to keep them in the Premier League. And then he can relax and he's got a free hit to look at his squad, to assess his squad in a similar way to Brendan Rodgers did at Celtic when he, when he sorry, at Leicester when he came yep. from Celtic. But Frank's got more pressing matters. He has to save them from relegation. He has to get enough points in the bag at the moment to keep them in there. They've only got 19 points. So they're probably halfway there. But you look at the points tallies this year, I don't think it's going to be 40. It's probably going to be 36, 35 that keep you up this year. Yep. So he's got to get there first. And he's, as you say, he's got a difficult run of games. If Leeds go there, this weekend and get a result, they're really in the mire. They're Could you really see in the it, trouble. Paul? I, you can always see Leeds scoring. Yeah. I worry about Leeds defensively. You know, Leeds have got a lot of players missing. We, we know that. We talk week in and week out about the amount of players that Leeds have got missing. They ship goals. They concede a lot of goals. One of the worst in the bottom for goal difference, the minus 16 goal yeah. difference. Their goalkeeper is up there with the top saves made in the Premier League. So they concede so many chances. So, yes, Leeds will concede. They will concede chances. But they can also cause Everton a problem at the other end goals in that one maybe uh, but Everton have got a bit of work to do um, we saw Everton and Newcastle getting a massive win against them and they then take on Aston Villa who also ship goals in the week as well so are we in for goals in this game at the weekend? The Newcastle Villa game I think yeah. it'll be a great game um, I think it'll be an entertaining game two teams that do struggle defensively at times I've been really impressed with what Stephen's done at Villa. I like yeah. what he's done. I think the way that they, they play, the way that they go yeah, forward. Yeah, there's a belief, isn't there, in the players he's instilled that, in There's them. a belief that you know they're up to 11th in the Premier yeah. League. You think about where they were when he took over. And you've got to give him a lot of credit because managers don't get jobs when teams are doing well. Very rarely does a manager pick up a job in the Premier League because the team's doing well. You come into a situation where there's low morale, the performances haven't been great, and the team's not performing. So to have the impact that he's had and also to impact his style and the way that he wants to play in the short time that he's been there. You know, there's, there's, he's, he can take a great deal of credit from where he's put Aston Villa at the moment. It's a tough one to call that, was not it? You, if you were Villa, you would certainly wouldn't want to go to Newcastle this weekend, would you? No, it's going to be a tough place to yeah. go. I mean, that place was bouncing when they, when they beat Everton. You look at the fans, you look at the impact that they have. And I don't care what people say. When you play anywhere, regardless of where it is, even St James's Park is one of the best when it's bouncing and the mm. fans are behind you. But it's difficult when it's the other side and the fans aren't behind you. So you need to go and there and score, back. silence them a little if bit. If you can keep the crowd quiet, yeah. yeah. But when what people don't realise, that pitch is on a slope at Newcastle. So when you're watching it as a, a spectator, you watch the advertising boards on the far side of the field. You don't actually notice that the pitch is on a slope. But when you're defending that Gallagher end in the second half and they're coming at you wave after wave, it's really difficult to get out because the, the slope's like that. Yeah. The advertising boards on the far side, they start like that. And if you look carefully, they gradually get bigger towards the corner flag. And that shows you the gradient on that pitch. And all these years, they've had the opportunity to change it. And they never had. And it's a very, very difficult place to defend when you're stuck in their second half. Yeah, I'm sure you've been in that situation a few <laughs> times, Paul. Uh, talking of Aston Villa, I mean, they've got plenty going forward. Uh, 
brilliant from Jacob Ramsey. Looks a real prospect. Best man to be a manager, Steven Gerrard, because what a, an icon to look up to. And they've got uh, Philippe Coutinho. What an absolute coup. He's brilliant again, wasn't he, in the week? Well, he's always been a top-class yeah. player. He's always been a world-class player. And I think the thing with Coutinho is the man management. Um, he's had a difficult time since he's left Liverpool. He needs to feel wanted, doesn't he? And needs to be told he's one of the best arm, players in the world. around him. Yeah. A bit of love. And his mate Stevens, Stevie G's in charge with him. And you can see the relationship there works already. I mean, he's only been in there a short space of time. But the impact that he's had, listen, he's only going to get fitter and he's only going to get better. Mm -hmm. He's only played a couple of games, you know, scored, scored his goal. He's going to get better. His relationship with the players around him is going to get better. It's exciting times for Villa. And Jacob Ramsey, I mean, you just have to look at his performances. Stevens tried to keep a lid on it, but then he couldn't. He just said he's going to, he's going to play for England yeah. regularly one day. He's 20, which, isn't which he? Which he will. Isn't he? Yeah, 20 years he... of age. And he's, he's the perfect midfielder. He's got an engine on him. He's strong in the tackle. He scores goals. He's top brilliant, player. isn't he? A top player. And Villa backed Steven in the transfer market in January. And they'll back him to keep players like that. They'll sign them on long-term contracts. The club wanted to change direction they w went away from Dean Smith they wanted to change direction with Stephen they put the money in to get him away from Rangers they've now given him back in, in the transfer market they can see what he's done with what they've they've given him and now he's got the opportunity to build and to go again with these type of quality players the quality of player at Aston Villa has upped already and they're linked with Basuma from Brighton as well if, the, if they're able to get him in the summer that again is an improvement and that takes them up another level yeah, look a good side, don't they, potentially, Villa? Uh, certainly, Gerrard has got them ticking, but tough game against Newcastle. Uh, it be a tough game as well for Spurs, talking about backing in the transfer market. Tottenham have kind of, your former club, have said to Antonio Conte, go on then, clear the decks, bring a couple in. Uh, but, of course, they were frustrated in the week by Southampton, who, well, I think Ralph Hassan all said it was their best performance ever in his three years in charge. So maybe they were brilliant and Spurs not quite at it. He's not happy, Antonio, is he? You look at him in his press conferences and his interviews, he's not a happy bunny at the moment. He's saying that his players are doing well. I mean, I, I, I spoke the other week, I saw them play against Chelsea. Chelsea played well, Spurs played well. But when a, a really good team plays really well and a not so good team mm. plays really well, he hinted at that, the golf he? is he there. He said there's still a, you've, you've, you've got to put it into perspective. And that's the golf, you have yeah. to put it into perspective. He can only work with what he's got. He thinks that he needs players, he needs to get the team better, which he does. There is a golf in quality. And Spurs will continue to lose games like they did against Southampton because they aren't at the level that he wants them at yet. He's not going to fix it in one transfer window, but it shows that the chairman trusts him by allowing him to do the business that he's done. You look at Ndombele and Lo Celso, that's £100 million that's been allowed to go out on loan. So they say that he's not been back financially by buying players as such. He has because there's £100 million just gone out on loan and he's been allowed to juggle around his squad what he wants to do. Two players that have come in, Bentaker, I think eventually will have a, an impact on the starting yeah. eleven. I think he'll be a good player, but I still think Spurs are, are way off from where they want to be. It's going to take him two or three windows. What do you think, the three, four players short, maybe a little bit more? I think he probably wants more, in all honesty. You look at the defence, the defensive side of things, the goals they conceded last night against Southampton were abysmal. I mean, um, the, the back three that he played, yeah. and Emerson Royal on the right. Emerson yeah, was, he was, Royal, for a couple, he was culpable he? for yeah. two, two of them. Doherty's played in that position. Emerson Royale's more of a right back than a right wing back. The goals tend to come from down that side. I don't know why Doherty isn't playing to the level that he did at Wolves in that position on the, in the right wing back, because that's what got him the move to Spurs in the first place. Emerson Royale's been miles off it the last few games. And the back three, Deverson Sanchez, every time the ball goes near him, you worry about him. Um, Romero is the, you know, one of the only ones. You, I like him, I like the way he plays. But in my opinion, if he's going to play the back three, the two centre-half short, he needs a, a wing back. Um, Regulian for me on the left side is good enough. Yeah. I think he needs another centre midfielder and he needs somebody to play when Harry Kane doesn't. So, in all honesty, I think they're a way off. Yeah, it's five there, isn't it? I mean, if you're playing behind that Spurs defence at the moment, Paul, would you be worrying? What, how do you solve an issue like that as a goalkeeper? Lloris can only do so much. But the, the marking was all, awful last night. The, the marking was terrible. Um, the, the positional play, the positional awareness of the defence was terrible. So is that the, the keeper's job took, as well, no, to, not... to grab them round? I know you try and see things, because that, that's your job, isn't it? You can coach you as much as you can. It. You coach as much as you yeah. can. And my belief as a goalkeeper was always to play with your mouth as much as you could, because yeah. if you organise what's in front of you, you cut your own workload down. So if you're constantly on at the people in front of you, coaching and telling them where you want them, your workload is going to be lessened. But if, you, if you're doing that with players that aren't good enough to do what you're asking them to do, and Antonio Conte is probably doing the same thing. He's on the training ground. He's working with players that he's thinking, he's not good enough to do what I want him to do. I'm asking him to do this. I want to play a certain way. 
I haven't got the calibre of player to do that. And I think you've seen that after games recently. He's, he's almost as good as come out and said that. Uh, they take on Wolves, don't they, Tottenham? So uh, <laughs> it's a tough one to bounce back with. Yeah, we've just talked about Wolves. We said you know, how stingy they are. Yes, we know that they're not free-flowing and scoring a lot of goals, but they're stingy at the back. So it is a tough one. But, I mean, they're at home again. And Conte's record went last night since 2020, October 2020 with Inter Milan. He's not lost a home game. Wow. He won't want to lose back-to-back. And he won't want to lose back-to-backs. But it's not going to be easy against Wolves. It's going to be a really cagey, tight game. Uh, what do you fancy? 4-6 Spurs, 11-4 the draw, 5 to Wolves? Sat on the fence. I, thought <laughs> I think it might Sat be a on draw. The fence. I've gone for a draw and under two yeah. and a half goals. I know Spurs have got a lot of firepower, but Wolves are stingy. Draw under two and a half goals. There you go. Let's have a look at uh, Southampton and Manchester United. United, of course, uh, were held by the bottom club, Burnley. Should have won that game. VR maybe having a bit of a say as well. But Southampton, having produced one of the best performances, are going to have to perform again. So uh, it's a tall order, that, isn't it, for players? Yeah, it's a massive ask, especially because it's the half 12 kickoff on a Saturday yeah. as well. It's an early kickoff, it's an early game for them. You very rarely get good games early on in a weekend. We as players used to hate playing the early kickoffs. Um, the later, the better, and under the lights was even better. But I think it's a big ask for Southampton to go again, especially at Old Trafford. But we know that Manchester United are unpredictable at home. They haven't been great at home. Most of their clean sheets they've got have come on the road. Under Ragnick, they're inconsistent. Mm. You still, you know, Pogba's come back into it. Ronaldo didn't play against Burnley. Cavani played. Ronaldo came on. You've got Lingard. Man United fifth. Realistic, they're, they're fighting for fourth for a Champions yeah. League place. Southampton have surprised me this year, sat in tenth. And the, the, the performance at Spurs suggests that they do actually deserve it. They can cause Manchester United problems, but I, I honestly think it'll be a big ask to go again twice in a week. Yeah, I think that might be the downfall. That's like some two massive performances required. Um, so, man, you just to edge it for you. Man, you just to edge yeah. it, but I fancy Southampton to get a goal because Manchester United are vulnerable at home. Yeah. I've gone Man United and both teams to score. Yeah, seems a sensible one and a bigger price available on that. Um, we talked about Man United. They were held by Burnley. I mean, they are digging in Burnley, one of your former clubs. Uh, Vicor certainly made a, a bit of a difference, showed a nice bit of skill for a big fella. Uh, and maybe that's what they're lacking. But the 9-1 to one to beat Liverpool this weekend, it's a really tough ask for Sean Dyche's men. That's a massive ask, and I think the price tells you everything. Um, you know, Liverpool have got the game uh, tonight against Leicester, yep. but then Burnley pulled out a performance against Manchester United. Mm. But I think Liverpool are better than Manchester United, and the way that they play, I think they'll cause Burnley problems. The price, the, the, it suggests everything. I mean, you're going to get no value in this one back in Liverpool. One to three. Your value is yeah. putting Liverpool as part of your acre to gain a slight percentage or getting the score right or Liverpool half-time, Liverpool full-time. Burnley generally start games well. They'll try and be defensively robust. They'll try and be defensively sound. If Liverpool score early, it'll be a problem. It'll be a case of how many. The bet here is you have to be creative with it, I think. As much as I'd like to make a case for Burnley, they'll try and stay in the game as long as they can. They'll play mixed football, they'll play slightly more direct, they'll hit the big fella up front, they'll try and get bodies around him. I can't make a case for Burnley. I think you have to be constructive with your bet. Burnley, uh, draw at half-time, Liverpool full-time, yeah. and pick a goal scorer. Get some kind of value unless you're going to add it to an acker. And these aren't the games that are going to save Burnley, are they? These aren't the ones, these are not season-defining games. But you look at the last three games, Arsenal away, Man United at home, and now uh, Liverpool, Liverpool, you'd look at all three of those games and you wouldn't say the season-defining games. But when you look at the table, the 20th with 14 points, having only won one game, every game now is season-defining for them. They're going to desperately look to take something, but I just can't see how. Yeah, got to take points against teams around them, haven't they? But uh, it's going to be a Liverpool win. Let's rattle through the uh, predictions then, Paul, on the Premier League weekend. We've kind of touched upon them, but... Uh, Man United against Southampton, narrow 3-5 to five United for you. Narrow Manchester United win, but both teams to score, because I think Southampton are capable of scoring at Old Trafford. Uh, we mentioned Brentford briefly, they take on Crystal Palace, who certainly got some talented players in their ranks. But Brentford are at home in this one, and 13-8. to eight. But they've lost six in, six in a row. Um, Palace are a decent side, draw with Norwich last time out. Zaha with his brilliant goal and his awful penalty. The two sides of him, <laughs> yeah. which was, was terrible. But Palace haven't won in 2022. So there's a case for both here. So I'm going to, but you look where they both are on the table. Look at the table. Brentford 14th, Palace 13th. They're both going to be happy with a draw. I, I can't. I, I don't know how many. But whether it's one one, two two, or nil nil. But I don't think it'd be a great game. It'd be a draw that one. Yeah, 21 to 10. The uh, draw in that one. Touched upon Everton against Leeds briefly. Can see Leeds scoring in that game. But um, against Everton, your former club, are you 
going to go with them or not? No, I'm sitting on the fence again with that one. I think this one will be a really feisty game. I think there'll be more than three and a half yellow cards. I think you can put some money on some cards in this game. Um, there'll definitely be goals. Neither team can defend and both teams will be able to score goals. I'd go for a high scoring, high scoring score draw. So probably more than three and a half goals in the game and probably more than three and a half yellow cards. Yeah, you could see it. Yeah, 2-2 two, yeah. two or 3-3, three, three, something like yeah, that. Yeah, be a great game, that one, won't it? Uh, Watford against Brighton. Roy Hodgson sort of uh, firmed things up at the back for Watford. Brighton have been the surprise package, haven't they? They've done well, Brighton. Um, you know, they lost last time out to Spurs in the FA Cup. But before that, they've gone draw, draw, draw. They really are the draw specialists. Watford are at a point in the season now where they have to start winning games. Lost to West Ham, drew with Burnley. The 19th, they, they must win games. They're at home. This is a game where Watford have to win. You know, you look at the table, you look at you talk about Burnley, Liverpool, games where you don't expect to win. Watford have to win this one, so I'm going to go for Watford by one goal. There you go, Watford to nab it, that might be value. We've not mentioned Norwich against Man City. Norwich are unbeaten in three. City are one to six, though. How, how would you mention Norwich? You don't give them a chance yeah. against City, do you? City are the machine. Well, they're 18-1 Norwich, up, so they've got on. it right, haven't they? 18-1 to one yeah. at home. Yeah. That's incredible odds, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely yeah. incredible odds. If you put them, you know, you put them into an Acre with Burnley, and if those two came in, you, you, yeah, you're moving house, results. aren't you? You're moving house. Yeah. Um, but no, it's really difficult to make a case for Norwich. Defensively, they are very weak. Dean Smith has improved them. There has been an improvement. City 12 points clear. Be creative with your bet. How many? Who's going to score? Half time, full time. Pick your scorers and pick your, pick how many. Yeah, and a cap bet maybe. Uh, I've touched upon the Sunday game. Burnley against Liverpool. Liverpool at one to three to get the win in that one. Uh, goals in Newcastle, Aston Villa for you on Sunday. Yeah, both yeah. teams. I've got both teams to score, and I fancy Trippier again. Trippier was outstanding with his free kick, and I think given the opportunity anywhere around the box, he'll be able to the, the service, the delivery that he's got. I think Trippier and Ollie Watkins as well. I think he's been playing particularly well. So I've gone for a draw, both teams to score, and Trippier and Watkins at some point in the game. Yeah, so maximum as well. Buys free kicks for fun, doesn't he? Yeah. Which helps, doesn't it? Uh, Tottenham, your former club against Wolves. Do you think they might just edge that one, Tottenham? No, I've gone for Did a cagey draw. draw. Yeah, a cagey yeah. draw, but not a lot of goals. Very cagey draw, under two and a half goals in the game. And let's wrap things up. Leicester in action against Liverpool, then take on West Ham who uh, are flying and of course they've had problems as well West Ham we don't need to say any more I don't think yeah. but uh, Leicester West Ham it's going to be a tough game for both teams both teams want to be in that fourth position Leicester are miles off it at the moment I think they're going to come off the back of a tough game against Liverpool tonight so it'll be interesting to see how they approach it it's a home game they'll want to win that game they'll desperately be looking to win that game to close the gap both teams defensively struggle as well concede goals I've got a kind of avoided prediction I've gone both teams to score but over three and a half goals in the game yeah I could see that brilliant plenty to go look forward to this weekend good to have the Premier League back isn't it after the winter break Paul do you know what I, was, I wasn't overly excited about the FA Cup last weekend but it was brilliant it turned up a few yeah. shocks really enjoyed watching it and there was a bit of love for the FA Cup came back last, last week yeah, certainly did. Great to have you, as always. Brilliant predictions. Fingers crossed for all of those. Could be some big shocks on the way, but probably not. Uh, that's it as far as the football show is concerned. Big thanks to Paul Robinson and for you as well for watching. Do join us again next week. <laughs>